welcome to ABC World News. Here is tonight's feature story. Imagine that you are Jewish. What is the atmosphere that you are living in like? On one hand, the outlook is optimistic. Your country has been working to recover medieval landmarks, including synagogues and Jewish cemeteries. People are investigating their families to see if they have Jewish roots. Culturally, it would seem Jews are very fortunate where and when you are living. On the other hand, over a third of your fellow countrymen have an unfavorable opinion of your religious community. Out of all countries surveyed, yours has ranked among the most anti-Semitic countries. When and where are you living? No, you do not reside in Germany in the 1940s. This is a picture of Spain in the present day. The current Jewish population in Spain is between 40 and 50,000 people, which is only 0.08% of Spain's total population of 47 million. The current population, which is concentrated in Toledo, is mostly descended from individuals from Northern Africa, Argentina, and Morocco. The revival efforts include attempts to recover medieval Jewish buildings and communities. One prime example is the Transito Synagogue in Toledo. This building dates from the 14th century. It was saved from destruction during the expulsion and was converted into a hospital. The synagogue has also functioned as multiple churches, military headquarters, a national monument, and a museum. In addition, new museums, cultural centers, restaurants, and music groups have been created which are devoted to the Sephardic tradition. Accompanying these new developments are pieces of history that are being preserved and saved from destruction. As Rabbi David Lieberson believes, the government is using the Jewish patrimony for a purpose, and the only real purpose is to bring tourism to Spain. Supporting this claim is the Red de Juderias, meaning Jewish Network, dedicated to preserving the Jewish cultural legacy among two dozen cities. But the main task on its agenda? Promote tourism. Tourist facilities were going to be built on the remains of a Jewish cemetery in Barcelona and a school on more cemetery remains in Toledo before an international uproar halted these projects. Meanwhile, the economic crisis in Spain and the Israeli-Palestinian conflict have prompted a negative perception towards Jewish individuals in Spain. In fact, Spain ranks as one of the most anti-Semitic countries in the European Union, being the only country in which negative views outweigh positive views. What are these opinions based off of? Not personal experience. For there are so few Spanish Jews, again only 0.08% of the total population, that most Spanish individuals have never met a Jewish person before. And this new anti-Semitism is reflected of ideas represented in the country's media outlets. Before addressing these claims of anti-Semitism, let's take a step back and look at the international community's definition on anti-Semitism. In 2004, the European Union Monitoring Center on Racism and Xenophobia created a working definition. Anti-Semitism is a certain perception of Jews, which may be expressed as hatred towards Jews, Rhetorical and physical manifestations of anti-Semitism are directed towards Jewish or non-Jewish individuals and or their property toward a Jewish community, institutions, and or religious facilities. The goal of this process was to create a comprehensive definition for the use in the field which is easily accessible to a range of law enforcement, justice, and government officials. They go on to highlight examples of situations of anti-Semitism in the public sector. These include calling for, aiding, or justifying the killing or harming of Jews in the name of a radical ideology or extremist view of religion. Also, making malicious, dehumanizing, demonizing, or stereotypical allegations about Jews as such or the power of Jews as a collective, such as, especially but not exclusively, the myth about a world Jewish conspiracy or of Jews controlling the media, economy, government, or other societal institutions. Also, accusing Jews as a people of being responsible for real or imagined wrongdoing committed by a single Jewish person or group, or even for acts committed by non-Jews. In addition, denying the scope, fact, mechanisms, or intentionality of the genocide of the Jewish people at the hands of the National Socialist Germany and its supporters and accomplices during World War II. Also, accusing the Jews as a people or Israel as a state of inventing or exaggerating the Holocaust. And finally, 
accusing Jewish citizens of being more loyal to Israel or to the alleged priorities of Jews worldwide than to the interests of their own nation. As we shift our attention back to the views of the modern Spanish population, we will see aspects of this definition highlighted in the public opinion. To begin examining popular opinion, one need not look past the top tier of Spanish government. Prime Minister José Luis Rodríguez Zapatero has made encouraging a more open and tolerant society a primary objective of his administration. However, Zapatero is known for his anti-Israel and anti-Jewish outbursts, most shocking of which was made at a dinner party at, the Sp at Spain's White House, the Moncala Palace. Zapatero reportedly began a tirade of anti-Semitic and anti-Zionist oration, concluding with the phrase, it is understandable that someone might justify the Holocaust. Among his other indiscretions, Zapatero has driven Israeli-Spanish relations to their lowest point in 20 years of diplomatic ties. He has also attempted to restore ties with the Arab world, Israel's enemies. Also, during the Lebanon War in 2006, Zapatero participated in an anti-Israeli rally wearing a Palestinian scarf. The tide of popular opinion has turned against the Jews due to the material that the public is exposed to. The socialist government impacts Spanish radio, television, and print media, which is notoriously biased against Israel. In Spain, neoconservatives are most concerned with the conspiracy mentioned in the definition of anti-Semitism, which is that there is a movement to create a Jewish domination of the world. This theory has become center stage as Spain's economy is facing dark times. The unemployment rate has risen rapidly to 20%, which is highest in the industrialized world. Spaniards are searching for someone to blame, and the blame has landed squarely on Jewish shoulders. 46% of Spaniards hold a negative view of Jews, but why? 17% say it is due to the conflict in the Middle East. 30% of the dislike stems from their religion, customs, and way of life. Finally, 20% say they dislike Jews, but do not know why. After delving further into the opinions of Spaniards, 58% believe that Jews are too powerful because they control the economy and mass media. When the survey pool is limited to university students, this percentage rises and goes even higher among those interested in politics. Among the most well-educated are the university students, 60% of whom do not want a Jewish classmate. Among other opinions, 54% believe Jews have too much power in international markets. Also, 51% believe that Jews are more loyal to Israel than to Spain. And finally, the number of Spaniards who think favorably of Jews, 37%. With these numbers in mind, the world wonders what can be done to combat this growing anti-Semitism. Dr. Yuda Stalov of the Jerusalem Interfaith Encounter Association believes that he has found a solution. He explains that the main factor that allows the negative beliefs to repel is ignorance. There are very powerful and moving forces that come with religion, which can be used, and in this case misused. The goal is to reach true coexistence, and Stalov believes that once we overcome the ignorance between the different groups, we build a barrier that does not allow the root cause to induce prejudices fears, and hatred. The process to reach this, according to Stalov, is interfaith discourse. For more information about this nonprofit organization, please visit www.interfaith-encounter.org. This concludes this evening's feature. Next up, we travel to Egypt for an update on the effects of the uprising that occurred earlier this year. Live from Westfield, I'm Tracy DeAngelis, and you're watching ABC World News.